Hey there everybody, this is Asenjo again. In this skill video, we're going to be focusing on the dwarf's abilities. For the ones that are not interested in the commentary and just want to get straight through to the skills, I also have an abridged version of this video that will be linked in the video as well as in the description. First on our list is going to be one of my favorite dwarf skills, which is the Power Bomb. Power Bomb is a skill that enhances the dwarf's default grab, and for the ones that don't know, it's performed by pressing up and square in the air or on the ground. The dwarf is the only character in Dragon's Crown that can grab and grapple other characters, and that's a shame because it's so much fun. Each level of the skill will increase the damage of the throw itself as well as a shockwave that's really good for crowd control. In this footage here you can see that each level of the power bomb increases the shockwave of the move. A high level of power bomb is one of the many reasons the dwarf has some of the best crowd control in terms of the melee characters. It's really easy to disrupt and kill an entire mob just by chain grabbing multiple enemies and chucking those enemies into other set enemies. Once you get the power bomb to max, that shockwave is just a big disrupting hitbox that normally knocks mobs off of their feet and stops all NPCs from having any fun at all. A few side notes about the power bomb. Normally, you can't grab elite monsters like, for example, the red zombie, the green orc, black goblin, or assassin pirate, which is the one with the red blade. But if you're able to hit one of those elite enemies with a status effect such as freeze, petrify, or stun, you can basically grab the crap out of them until they hit the ground from your first throw. Also, you can still have fun with power bomb in boss rooms because they always leave you a rock, which I usually call Tom, which we also call Dwayne the Rock Johnson. As for the skill levels, at level 1, the dwarf gets a 30% damage boost from his throws. At level 2, it gives him access to a bigger shockwave. And at the max level, you're going to be doing 250% more damage and you're going to have a huge shockwave to go with it. The skill itself maxes out at 26 skill points total. Next up, we're going to be talking about the dwarf skill, Lethal Fist. This is a skill that increases the damage of the dwarf's bare fist damage for non-weapon based attacks. This is a skill that's similar to some of the elf's abilities, which give you more ways to dish out damage with your character when you can't rely on your primary weapon. Doing bare fist punches is one of the many options a dwarf has when his hammer is on cooldown after, like, let's say, a power smash. This skill gets even better when you combine it with skills like Magman Fusion, which gives you fire property to your attacks, and Power Mastery, which increases your overall fire damage, all of which lets your bare fist damage leave a serious mark on your enemy. This skill is pretty straightforward. The more levels that you put into it, the more percent damage increase your bare fisted attacks do, starting with 20% more damage at level 1 and maxing out at a whole 250% more damage for your bare fist attacks at level 10. You can max out this skill at 26 skill points total. As for the dwarf skill Eagle Dive, it basically enables you to have a glide attack after pressing the jump button during a double jump, or just press a jump button three times basically. After the first level of that skill, every skill afterwards adds bombs that basically drop out of bomb space and take up no resources from you whatsoever. I personally didn't care for the move at first until I actually started using it a bit more. It does okay damage on large bosses like Medusa, Chimera, etc. if you can get most of those bombs to hit. The bombs will also explode on contact with enemies even if they're standing on water, unlike normal bombs. But the bombs count as fire attacks, you can use them to kill ghosts, you can use them to ignite oil on the ground, you can use it to blow up the powder keg that you get later on, which I'll talk about later. It has a varied amount of uses and it's actually a lot of fun. As you can see in the footage here, at level 1, you simply start out with a glide powered by the dwarf's triceps. Each level after that gives the dwarf additional bombs that he can drop out of bomb space on his enemies. When talking about Eagle Dive skill points, like I mentioned before, first level enables use of a glide, level 2 allows you to drop 3 bombs from your glide, and each level of that lets you drop 1 additional bomb until you max it out at level 5, which lets you drop 6 bombs during a glide. 
The skill itself maxes out at 12 skill points total. Next, we're going to be talking about the Dwarf's Power Attack skill, Grand Smash. Now this skill lets him drop lightning bolts whenever he does his power attack, which is done by hitting the circle button. This works like all of the other melee characters' power attacks, where you do a strong attack with invincibility frames that hit an area based on how high you have the skill. Grand Smash is one of the Dwarf's best options to do damage just because of the large area of effect and the invincibility time when he's doing it. The lightning bolts hit everything in their radius all the way up to the top of the screen, unlike the fighter and the slamazon, whose power attacks mostly hit those who are close to them and grounded opponents. With Grand Smash, the dwarf can easily damage annoying hovering enemies like the bees or bosses like Medusa. You can make Grand Smash even better with some gear from Mirage Tower, like the ice weapons that can change your Grand Smash to ice property and basically let the dwarf drop a mini blizzard. Another good thing to note is that it's a great idea to have two sets of axes in your bag so that you can Grand Smash with the dwarf, swap weapons, and then Grand Smash again. As you can see in the footage, with each level of Grand Smash, it increases the power and the number of lightning bolts that are generated with the attack, which will increase the overall damage and range. Without the skill, you hardly have any range with the attack, and you just have that wind-like shockwave that rises above him. This is one of the least expensive power attack skills in the game despite how great it is. The skill maxes out at 12 skill points total. Next up, we're going to be talking about Frenzy. Now, Frenzy is one of my favorite skills right after Power Bomb. The skill makes your default combo way better by turning it into a JoJo reference or 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 barrage that lets you punch people forever for a number of seconds. The skill gets better with equipment and combining it with other skills. For example, if you get skills like Lethal Fist, Powder Mastery, and Magma Infusion, you'll be doing solid damage with and without your weapon. And with skills like Rock Skin and Toughness, you'll be taking less damage and less knockback, so you can give way less fucks when you're punching someone forever for literally 4 seconds. Another good thing to note is that you can change directions while you're punching, if you have to switch targets. As you can see in the footage here, each level of the skill is going to increase your time that you can be throwing punches in Frenzy, usually around 0.5 seconds per level. Once you get Frenzy maxed out, you can basically punch people forever for about 4 seconds. And the longer you're punching, the faster the punches you're going to get. His DPS from this is not as good as the slam is on, but it definitely gets the job done, and it's a lot of fun to use. As for the skill points themselves, the first level of Frenzy basically gives you access to the Frenzy effect for about 1.5 seconds, and each level is going to increase the overall power and duration until it maxes out at 4 seconds of punching. Luckily for such a fun skill, it's not a huge skill investment, Frenzy maxes out at 14 skill points total. This time we're talking about the Dwarf Skill Bomb Satchel. This is a utility skill for the Dwarf that takes advantage of the Dwarf's expertise in bombs, by giving him lots of bombs. It's another one of the many ways the Dwarf can get damage even without using his primary weapon. The skill would be the holdout dagger equivalent when comparing it with the Elf. The Elf gets more damage than others with daggers due to backstab and her dexterity, and holdout dagger gives her a chance to use it more often. The dwarf skill that we'll discuss later, Powder Mastery, increases his damage with fire-based attacks including bombs, and Bomb Satchel gives you a lot of bombs to use with said expertise. In terms of skill points, the first level gives you access to the actual Bomb Satchel with 4 bombs, and every level increases your bomb count up to 15 bombs at level 5. The skill maxes out at 12 skill points total. Fire Barrel is another explosive base utility skill that takes advantage of Powder Mastery for increased damage. The skill gives you access to explosive fire barrels that you can either chuck with the dwarf's grapple ability or make it explode by hitting it yourself or allowing the enemy to blow themselves up. I never paid any attention to this skill until the making of this video, but I see it has a lot of fun uses. You can put it out very quickly and use it defensively on mobs of enemies that try to hit you. You can use it offensively, for example, by placing a barrel before you use your power smash for an extra burst of damage. 
You can even get double explosions by blowing up a fire barrel with a bomb. It all depends on how you want to use it and how you want to have fun. As for the skill points, the first level of fire barrel gives you access to three fire barrels. And each level after that simply increases how many of them that you can carry up to nine fire barrels at level five. The skill maxes out at 12 skill points total. The next skill we're talking about is going to be Magma Infusion. This is a utility based skill that buffs up all of your attacks to have fire properties. This is one of my favorite tool based buffs in Dragon's Crown because it has plenty of uses and has a lot of duration for said uses. Like I mentioned before, this is a skill that has great synergy with attack skills like Frenzy and passive buff skills like Powder Mastery and Lethal Fist. The more you invest in this skill, the more uses that you're going to get, the more duration for the fire effect that you're going to have, and you're also going to get increased chances to burn your enemies while attacking. As for the skill points, the first level of Magma Infusion gives you access to 3 uses, 15 second duration of the buff, and a 10% chance to burn enemies. But at max level at level 5, you get a whole 12 uses of the tool, 35 second duration, and a 50% chance to burn enemies with every hit. This skill maxes out at 12 skill points total. This time we're going to be talking about the dwarf skill Powder Mastery. Now this buff is another one of those that has a lot of synergy with other abilities of the dwarf. The skill boosts his overall damage for all fire based attacks as long as those attacks are considered physical based attacks. Which means this includes bombs and fire barrels, but this does not include magic items like rings and scrolls. If you want to focus on punching people forever with fire, you can get a lot of benefit combining it with Frenzy, Lethal Fist, and Magma Infusion because you're going to get the most out of your Frenzy damage this way. And if you love blowing things up, you'll get more bang for the buck with the bombs and fire barrels with the extra damage with the Powder Mastery levels. In reference to the Powder Mastery skill levels, the first level starts you off with 20% more damage on your fire based physical attacks and each level increases the overall damage up to 100% more damage on fire based attacks at level 10. The skill maxes out at 26 skill points total. Next we're talking about the skill Trinket Maniac. It's one of the three defensive skills that help make the dwarf one of the most durable characters in the game, literally. With Trinket Maniac, the dwarf can heal lost HP and recover equipment durability just by picking up coins. The skill has very good synergy with coin based equipment and skills. There's equipment that gives you HP back for the coins that you pick up, along with the general skill Wealth to Health that also does the same thing. You can make it even better with equipment that forces coins to drop on hit. With the right combination, you can basically dungeoneer for a long time without using too much HP items or breaking your weapon. One thing to note is that Trinket Maniac cannot heal you past your normal HP max like food can. With the skill levels for Trinket Maniac, you start off with plus 2 HP recovery and plus 1 durability recovery, and the bonuses continue to increase up to 15 HP recovery and 5 durability recovery when picking up coins at the max level. The skill maxes out at level 10 for 24 skill points total. Before we get into the next skill, Rock Skin, we need to mention the dwarf's innate skill, Pump Up, which is done by holding down the square button, but instead of a block or a parry, it allows him to flex his muscles and have shiny pecs that reduce incoming damage by a bit. The skill Rock Skin further supplements this Pump Up skill by giving him more damage reduction for each level of Rock Skin. At level 1, Rock Skin increases Pump Up damage reduction by 20%. And max level, it increases your pump up damage reduction by a whole 50%. You can even get some equipment, such as weapons from the Labyrinth of Chaos, that increases the rock skin's effectiveness even more. If you get the right equipment and pair it up with the next skill, Toughness, you can be more reckless due to all of the extra survivability. This skill maxes out at level 5 for 12 skill points total. The last skill we're going to be talking about this time is going to be the Dwarf Skill Toughness, which is another defensive passive skill which makes you less likely to flinch and get knocked back with incoming attacks. If you want to be up close and personal with skills like Frenzy, this ability works well with Rock Skin so you can just go in punching forever with less of a chance of being stopped 
while you're taking less damage when you get hit. The skill starts off with 30 damage resistance for the first level, and at max level you can take up to 120 damage without flinching. This skill maxes out at level 5 for 12 skill points total. That's going to be it for the dwarf skill video. As always, I really appreciate everyone that took the time to check this out, and I'm really happy for the ones that I could help get a better picture of how the dwarf skills work. The next skill video that I will be doing is going to be for Team Mom, also known as the Sorceress. She feeds us, buys us nice things, protects us from harm, and Mama Bears when things get really tough. Team Mom is the only way to describe this next character, so look forward to it in the next video. And as always, thanks for giving me the time of day.